own power invisible and you see it everywhere and every day Hi, it's Caroline Castorena and this is John Verano and this is Visions of Inspiration. Welcome to our show. Oh my goodness, we got somebody that is so, so special and also wears a lot of hats. And a lot of fun. And a lot of fun. <laughs> this woman has helped me through so much and has given me an ability to get to know who I am as a person and to, be, and to enhance everything that I've done um, to a higher level. I'd like to introduce Sharon Grant. Yeah. Gang. Yeah. <laughs> I told you not to do that. Too. Sorry. I'll know not to do that next time. <laughs> it's like, oops, put that on my list there. <laughs> That's a cancel. <laughs> okay. Um, you got so much to share. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're also very intuitive. Uh huh. Okay. Um, what are some of the gifts that you've been given, and at what age were you when you started Ooh. Re recognizing these gifts? The first gift I noticed I was talking to Don earlier was um, mediumship, that I didn't really know I had it. Wow. And I would share, I shared a room with my middle sister, uh -huh. and about 11 o'clock at night, you know, people call it the witching hour, uh -huh. I, I'd be laying there, and all of a sudden the room would get really thick, and I'd start to feel people coming in the room and I'd break out in this cold sweat and I'd be sitting there with my covers over my head and my sister would just be sleeping. Uh -huh. That's interesting. They would come at the same time. It was like their it calling was always time. Like, it was like their calling time. Like I, if wow. I went to bed at nine wow. or ten, they would they would show up about an hour later and if I was asleep, I would actually wake up out of a out of a deep sleep oh, that and was rude feel them, them coming they woke you up. <laughs> and feel them coming in. <laughs> I know. The, the earliest I remember I think I was sleep. seven. Oh my! Really? Goodness. I was seven, and I didn't know oh that my. my grandmother had the gift because my parent, my mom didn't tell me, um, my they sisters didn't have you. it, and my dad didn't tell me till years later. So I thought I was a freak. So that was your dad's mom. Yes. Okay. Yes, and wow. she was um, she was psychic. Wow. And I didn't these know were that. spirits that would wake you up in the middle of the night. Yeah. So mediumship means what? It's it's being able to talk to. Uh, people that have crossed over uh, your your guides your it's it, the, the light bodies you're able they're they're just out of phase with you wow. so you I don't see but I feel mm -hmm. and I can hear so oh. I'll hear whisperings I'm like okay I'm trying to sleep could you like <laughs> cut the noise please and I'll feel them I'll uh -huh. feel their presence and sometimes I, I get people that need to be guided home and they'll ta Aww. attach to me wow. and then I I can actually send them through the light. Wow. Which is, is not something I knew I could do, but it, apparently I can do it very easy. Hmm. Now, at what age did you s decide or realize mm -hmm. that you had these gifts, and what age did you start utilizing them I actually, to help people? I, was, I think I was already born open. I, okay. I didn't know that. I mm -hmm. used to try and open myself, and finally had a friend say, you're, you're already open. Ah. You don't have to keep trying to to do the the things to to make you open. So I I was always like that. Mm -hmm. And then in my 20s, I shut it down when I went into the military. You went into wow. the military. Wow, you were in the military. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I always love the shock of some people. They're so like, what? Oh. <laughs> Who are you in? I was in the military for 13 years. And, and army. The I was in the army. I did okay. four years uh -huh. active duty, eight years active reserves, wow. and one year inactive. I was actually discharged finally in, in 2001. Did you go to any of the wars? I did not. I actually was very blessed. Like when Desert Storm broke out, wow. I was at Fort Lewis, mm -hmm. but I wasn't deployed. Oh, wow. I wasn't deployed. Wow. What, what did you do in the service? I've done, see, over the 13-year span, I've done communications. Mm -hmm. I've done personnel. I've done um, what they call a lanes trainer, which means all when, when the soldiers are training, you're actually observing and grading them on what they're doing. Wow. And then my last four years on, on uh, reserve status, I was a combat medic, and then I was a combat medic instructor. So I've taught. Wow. For years. That's Maybe. very eclectic. Yeah. Wow. So I know. That's just a lot of yeah. It's a lot. A lot of hats. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of hats. Yeah. yeah. It's wow. a lot of hats. And so in '98, everything blew open again. Uh -huh. All of my senses came back, and it was, you know, it was got God saying, "Oh no, 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 no! You're not going to put the lid on this for long. It's time for all this to reopen." And so everything came flooding back. Why? In '98. That was 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Why did you not want it to open up? Because nobody. I didn't know anybody else who had 
what I had. And your parents didn't support you. They didn't know. I never told anybody. You didn't? No. I never said, oh, guess what, Mom? You know, I have dead people that come in my home. I'm waking up at 11 o'clock. I never did that. (laughs) (laughs) That would be a pretty scary experience. You know, yeah. And even though she she would have, and my mom just just passed about a month ago. So even though she, she... belief in some things she would never have it would have been a difficult thing for her to support mm-hmm. but I didn't find out from my dad till years later that my grandmother had the gift uh-huh. and I said well you know and then I told him he goes oh I didn't know that I'm like well I never told anybody because it, it felt weird because nobody mm-hmm. else my sisters didn't have it they never saw anything heard anything and so I just I just I just kept it to yeah. myself have you, you, so you your sisters know about what you do my middle sister knows my oldest sister is not familiar with what I do well, she may know now after no, the show. No, she won't know now. <laughs> 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 she won't know. I know. When she went to become, uh, you know, no. really well known. No. And, uh, Everybody you know, else knows. be all over TV. Oh, and they know. Media and everything. <laughs> <laughs> they Keep all it a know. Secret. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm we're out. not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I can read you. Yeah. <laughs> now, y- you know what I have found fascinating and mm-hmm. very intriguing uh, is the fact that when somebody does pass, mm-hmm. um, there's no closure. Sometimes I, I, there's no closure at all. I would I would feel. You know, I, I actually feel. had closure <coughs> because mm-hmm. you were able to see your mom. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about the people that don't go there that are that are not aware of any of that? They don't have closure. They don't. That's why okay. I remember when my mom passed. I immediately the next day I sent out an email to everybody that I knew um, who knew my mom had Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. and I said, you know. Every day, you're not promised. You're not even promised the next five minutes of your life, really. True. So if you have outstanding issues with people, you know, things that you are harboring in your heart mm-hmm. that you're not forgiving yourself for, because really all forgiveness is self-forgiveness first. Yeah. Um, you, you want to set that right, because if somebody that you loved were to leave you, you would be devastated because you have all these unsaid things. Mm-hmm. All these unexpressed emotions, all you know, and the love that you never said to this person. So I was blessed in the fact that I had the opportunity to to be there. My sister, my middle sister, and I, with my mom, when she passed. So we actually were, were was there the whole yeah. time. And, and see, that can destroy a person. Yes, it can. You know, I know, I know my, my my dad. He had Alzheimer's too. Mm-hmm. And and it was so cute because you know my dad when I would go over there, he well you know being Hispanic he'd call me Mija. He said, he says, where have you been? Mm. I haven't, you haven't come to see me. Right. You know, and he would always tell me, you're so beautiful. I'm like, okay, is he seeing me from the inside or is he seeing me from the outside or what's going on? Uh-huh. But it was such a wonderful feeling. Uh-huh. But yet, I stayed away. And I don't know why I did that. Hmm. Alzheimer's mm-hmm. is a difficult illness yeah. to deal with because yeah. it's, you're watching this person literally dissolve before your eyes yeah. and that's that's really difficult and there's thousands of people and their caregivers who are who are dealing with this right now and they don't have any support mm-hmm. and so when you don't know how to, to deal with it because you're literally this, this it's like somebody erasing your hard drive in yeah. your mind so yeah. all your memories um, Everything you knew, you, you can't spell anymore, you can't remember your own name, mm-hmm. and all that's being taken away, but yet you're still looking at this person who's alive in front of you, but the essence of them is starting to disappear, yeah. and that's really difficult to yeah. absorb. I was really fortunate because I did have friends that were helping me to work through that, and then two months later my mom died. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, I knew that I had to make peace with my mom. And I was able to make peace with my mom before she died. But the good thing is that I was able to hear from them after they passed mm. and the difference yes. and how how much it really, really helped me. I mean, there was, mm-hmm. you know, there was tears, but nothing like if it would have been if, if I wouldn't have known that right. I would be able to hear from them, you right. know. So it was a wonderful feeling right. to hear from them, yeah. and especially my mom, you know, with all the... the confusion and all the misunderstandings that we had between each other. Right. So it was good. Yeah. Now, my curiosity is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer's. Yes. How can you help someone with Alzheimer's? And, or can you? Once you're diagnosed, it depends on when the person is diagnosed. Okay. Um, one of the things we started noticing is that my mom would repeat herself mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. 
And at first, you're kind of, you've got so much going on because, you know, you've got life and you, or you've got kids and you've got all this happening. Mm -hmm. And then you start to go, you know, you just told me that like five minutes ago. And I would start noticing that she would say the same thing. It's like a skipped record. would keep repeating yeah. this, this oh, same. Okay. And she'd come in and she'd go, blah, 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 blah. And I go, okay. And then she'd walk out. And then five minutes later, she'd come in and she'd say the same thing. And I go, okay. And then she'd go away. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, she'd come back and say the same thing. Was it that repeated? It was that repeated. Wow. It, it's, and yeah. that's when we noticed that yeah. something that was, wow. wasn't right. And, but by the time we got her diagnosed, she was already considered to be moderate. Now, the thing to notice is if you catch it earlier, and we had her on medication, you know, you put them on the Namenda and the Aricept, mm -hmm. which slows it, mm -hmm. but okay. it doesn't, doesn't cure it. There's no cure for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop it. The earlier you catch it, the earlier you can start the person on it. For some reason, if you are an early diagnosis, uh -huh. it actually goes faster. My mom actually was diagnosed and passed in a three-year period. Almost oh, to the wow. day of her diagnosis. Oh. And she was only 71. Now, with your techniques, and, and, and I'm going to ask you to share about them because mm -hmm. they're wonderful techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, um, someone that has Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. with your techniques, are you able to work with them? That's my question. I haven't tried it yet, <coughs> and my mom was too far gone uh -huh, okay. when, when we learned of her so condition. You could. I, there wasn't really much I could do. Oh, okay. But what my intuitive feeling is, and what I've heard from other people, is mm -hmm. that Alzheimer's is about forgetting. Like you're trying to forget something. I believe that. In your life. But what, what happens is you go too far. Mm. You, you go too far. Like you can suppress a memory, but with Alzheimer's you actually suppress too far. And it turns into this, this illness where it, what happens? All of your memory is wiped out. Uh, now I believe that because my the history with my dad, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my mom, my dad didn't get along well. Um, my mom always put him down and stuff, and then my brother moved in, and they didn't get along. Mm -hmm. And and I just felt that my dad just, you know, just wanted to forget about everything that was going on. Absolutely. And and that was Absolutely. his choice of doing that. Right. So that's that's what I believe. And Alzheimer's becomes the medium for that. Yeah. And so you go too far. Yeah. You now, before we really get into, like, your actual work that you do, mm -hmm. what would you call yourself? I mean, do you have a, you, a self-proclaimed <laughs> title, goddess? What do you call yourself? <laughs> Madam goddess. One of, my, one of my former co-workers called me a maven one time. I thought that was really cute. Um, you want my official title or just... No, what do you call yourself? I mean, I, you say someone's like, oh, for the first time, hi, how are you? What do you do? You know what? I'm I'm just a multi. Now I call myself like a multi-dimensional work energy worker because uh -huh. I work on so many different levels and I pull in so many different techniques. Mm -hmm. I can't really give myself a title. It's really hard. And you do coaching and all kinds of. Awesome I do. Stuff. I do. I teach. Um, I'm master actually a master aromatherapist as well. So I have a lot of. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's cool. I have cool. a lot of hats. Are you married? You have kids? No. No. She no wonder you have time to do all that. <laughs> I have my degree. I have a degree in public health. Wow. So, oh I, you know, when I, once I got off active duty, I went back to school. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I've done HIV, AIDS counseling. Wow. I've done, um, I worked in a women's detox facility for about two years. And I was doing perinatal education. So I worked with all the pregnant women. And then I did health education for all of them. I've supervised health programs. Um, I've worked my time in corporate America. So I've been in and out of corporate. Oh so yeah, I, I've worn a lot of hats over the years. And then I became an energy worker and I just absorbed classes. I became a Reiki master teacher. Oh I became a shamanic practitioner. I did medical intuitive work. I, I mean, I've just, I've worked with flower essences. I work with, you know, the earth. I work with essential oils. Wow. So I just, there's a lot of things I just, I'm just absorbing. That's the most favorite thing you like to do. Oh, you can ask that question. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> you know, actually, the earthwork is really, is really fun. And what is that? Earthwork? Uh-huh. I basically, I help to heal the planet. Wow. <laughs> 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 There's more of you doing that. <laughs> there are there are more people. No, there are more people doing earth work and yeah. I actually found out that I, awesome. I could see there's a, a grid that surrounds the planet that holds the planet in place. And uh -huh. amazingly enough, when I was in Yellowstone last year, I actually saw the grid 
in the Yellowstone, right right at there outside of, um, was it the geyser? Old, Old Faithful. Faithful. Yeah. And I could see the grid inside. It was really weird, but it was inside the lodge. Wow. And it was on the floor, and I saw it flashing. And I'm standing there, my friend's like, what are you doing? You're standing with your mouth open. <laughs> and I could see the grid flashing on the floor, and I realized that the grid was weak in that spot. And oh if anybody knows anything about Yellowstone, mm -hmm. it's a huge caldera. That mm -hmm. the active caldera, which is right. why everything is steamy right. in, in Yellowstone, that covers two states. Wow. And so you don't want that to, to blow up. That's, no. That would not be a good thing no. for, for the planet. So I do earthwork. I help to heal the planet, keep the grid in place. Mm -hmm. um, I c converse a lot with the elemental kingdom. And, and it's just they, have, they help heal you. Have you ever worked, having worked with the earth energy, have you ever worked with like storms? I haven't done that. Yeah. Well, you yeah. could have helped us out. <laughs> <laughs> or the rain. All the rain. I know. It was so loud earlier. Yeah. No, I've not tried. People go, oh, moving clouds is so easy. I'm like, it is because I can't do it. <laughs> haven't done it yet. I haven't you done it do yet. It. I can do it. I haven't yeah. done it yet. Well, you know what? What I'm very intrigued in uh, is, is when you worked on me. Mm -hmm. And now, what would you call that? And... And, and tell me a little bit of what you did and how you did it, okay? Um, I'm a conscious awakening coach. Okay. So what I work on you is kind of like a, a curve of life, awa life coaching. It's okay. like life coaching, but it's, it's really about bringing to your awareness mm -hmm. subconscious blocks, okay. mindsets that may actually be sabotaging your life. This is the stuff that runs under your radar that you don't even know yeah. is there. Mm -hmm. And it... it, it when those things are activated, it keeps you disempowered, mm -hmm. and then you don't have personal, spiritual, or financial freedom. So when all of those blocks pop up, you're, you're hard-pressed to move forward in life. And this happens in people's businesses. Uh -huh. it, it happens in their lives. So you're actually wow. living in this, this constrictive state in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you hear people, and they're like, oh, you know, well, I, I really want this new job. I really want this relationship. I really want, you know, this money to come in. You know, these are gifts that are about the size of an Olympic swimming pool, uh -huh. but your life is so constricted, it's only about the size of a shot glass. Wow. What are you going to get in there? There's no room to grow. There's right. no expansion. So what I'm doing with you is I'm helping you expand by showing you where the blocks are so we can, we can move around them, dissolve them, mm -hmm. and you can expand more so that you can receive more. I love that metaphor. Yeah. The shot glass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> it's a great visual for, for those of us that have never had this experience. Yes. To know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. I get it now. I mean, I mean think about yeah. it. Olympic water, shot glass. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. going to fit. It's not going to fit. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, did you find that I was close to being there, or did you find that... It was difficult to get me there. You know what? You're you're not you're not difficult at all. What happened was you were already ready okay. for it, and that's what happens. Is I pulled to me the people that are actually ready to do the work because you're really you're peeling off some layers there mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't want to dig through. But we don't have to really dig because you know one of, one of my mentors says if you look for the dirt, it's right there. You know you don't have <laughs> yeah. to go digging for it. But you're you're ready to do the work. So when we're talking, and I'm actually tracking your energy, I'm actually oh, wow. tracking your voice, mm -hmm. what you're saying, what mm -hmm. you're not saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you, you know how you how it comes through on the phone, or if I'm in person with you, how how you're saying it, and and I'm saying, well, you know, well, what do you think about this? And you're like, oh, I never thought about it. It's almost like giving you a different perception, Absolutely. different perspective, mm -hmm. because if you're, if you're in your stuff, you've got no objectivity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. somebody helps you, and you become the hawk instead of the little ant in the forest going, I can't get out. You become the hawk, and you, you get above it, and then you have a whole different perspective on it, and then you can heal it. Mm -hmm. You can't heal what you can't see. That's for sure. You can't heal what you can't <laughs> recognize. That's, that's, yeah, oh, yeah. That's true. And, and th that's where it is with a lot of people. That's where it is. Because mm -hmm. when, I, when I talked to you yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, I already had a, a done deal. I know. It's my bad issues again. Okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry, you know. Yes. It's coming up again. Yes. And you said, well, wait a minute. What about? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what you're telling me, and mm -hmm. you had told me it was about more my, my worth. worth issues. Mm-hmm. 
Now, how did you figure that out? When you were telling me the story, mm-hmm. and it's always about the story. Uh-huh. Everybody's got a story. The story. Okay. It's the story. It's the story. <laughs> I'm doing that deep listening when I'm when I'm listening to your story, uh-huh. and I'm I'm listening to what you're saying, and I'm listening to what you're not saying, and then I'm hearing over here. Well, no, that's not a bad word. When you're intuitive, I'm channeling that the wow. other information, and so mm-hmm. all of that gets gets fed together uh-huh. and I'm sitting there and I'm taking notes and I'm, I'm very visual so I have to write things down so mm. I can see them and I'm like <coughs> no no that's not it <laughs> <laughs> what about this because you know your issue was you weren't getting what you thought you were supposed to get and you thought people had abandoned you but that's well maybe I'm I'm not worthy of that uh-huh. well maybe I said something wrong mm-hmm. well maybe you know they just weren't attracted to what I was saying that's about how you see yourself hmm. as if you're less than. Yeah. And that's a worth issue. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I can, when you told me about it, then I visualized events in my life that mm-hmm. helped me look at it and say, yeah, you know what, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You can actually take that and take it back to other experiences that you thought may have been abandonment. I did. And, and go, did. oh, wait a minute, that wasn't really that, was mm-hmm. it? Yeah. And it actually gives you some a space to go back and heal that. So you do have closure and you go, okay, now I know what this was about. And you can bring that healing into the present time. So now you can separate what you think is abandonment and what was really about, yeah. you know, you're not feeling good about yourself. Yeah. But you're looking very well today. <laughs> and I think you're doing, you're feeling really good about yourself. Because you, you glowed when I saw you this morning. Yeah, I am really in a good place today. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had mentioned a thing called tracking. Uh, yeah. What? Do, what? Do you, can you explain what that is? It's almost. Is it kind of airy fairy? <laughs> <kinda? laughs> it's like yeah, it's like kind of airy fairy. It's basically when I'm working with you, I'm not here. I mean, I'm grounded, and mm. I'm, but I'm grounded up and I'm grounded down. Wow. But I'm, I'm tracking, when I say I'm tracking, I'm watching your energy on, on different levels. Okay. So you're like your tra- vibration. You're monitoring it. And you're yes. Just it's like as if I had it. a computer monitor and I was, you know, monitoring, you know, some kind of nuclear power plant. I'm looking at all the power levels. Yeah. I'm looking where all the energy is. I'm looking to see if there's constriction in the voice, you know. So you're kind of charting where they're at. I'm charting. I'm charting a lot. I'm charting energy. I'm charting... Okay. Physically, I'm trying like you were clearing your voice a lot, and I was like, "Is there something you want to tell me?" And then I asked you something about, you know, you were telling me a story about, you know, um, carrying somebody, and I said, you know, does your back hurt anywhere? And you said, "Yeah, my my upper back is bothering me." Well, that's I'm tracking you on different levels. Oh, that's body talk. That's yeah. what, yeah, that's and body talk. And you know, talk. I was feeling too. It's like my chest feels like like I've been coughing a lot uh-huh. and it's starting to hurt. That's constriction in the heart chakra. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I had mentioned a friend of mine and told you that I was interest, that she was interested in getting some help. Mm-hmm. Now, you tuned in to her, obviously, or something happened mm-hmm. because she said, it doesn't seem like she's ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I picked mm-hmm. that up. So that was interesting that, mm-hmm. you know, you, you would feel that and you mm-hmm. would know that, mm-hmm. you know. And it's just, it's not something I have to sit and ponder. It just, it pops in now, and I just know. Now, if she came to you and says, I need your help, mm-hmm. and you know she's not ready, mm-hmm. how could you help her? I would let her qualify herself. I'm not going to tell you you're not ready for what I have to offer. I would let you qualify yourself. And I, we would have like a 15-minute conversation, mm-hmm. and I would know. And I would, I would have to tell you, you know, I don't know that you're ready for this at this time because trying to put somebody in a position to, to do a healing when they're not ready for it actually pushes them further into, deeper into that space of constriction that they don't want to wow. be wow. in. So you can't force a healing. It has to be self-initiated yeah. Yeah. all the way. And you have to be ready. You do have to be ready. Yeah. It's, it's about having an open mind and an open heart. Mm-hmm. to do the work that's required because nobody can really do your own work for you you have to do it yourself yeah. and that's that's difficult for a lot of people it is mm-hmm. well you know you talk about Alzheimer's and and uh, I'm gonna go real quick on this um, in the time that I was married I got to that point where I was in so much pain that I just stopped feeling yes and I had had the most difficult time to get that back mm-hmm. is to feel again. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! And I tell my clients, don't ever go there. And if you're there, 
you're going to really work on trying to get that feeling get back. back. Yeah, so that was a really big thing for me that I stopped feeling. And I, I knew it. When I did it, mm -hmm. I felt it. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. Because you're, you're shutting down your body. You feel through the body, through the emotional body. Yeah. And when you shut it down, basically what you're doing is you're, you're stuffing all that emotion in the body. Now, mm -hmm. that you, now you're asking the body to do something with that. Yeah. What's the body going to do with it? Oh, okay, well, I guess I'll start having a sore back and sore hips and knees. And, you know, maybe my kidneys and liver will swell. And maybe I'll start getting headaches all the time. Asthma. And having Because you're not expressing here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of things that, that the body will do to mm. get your attention. That's body talk. Um, That's body talk. When you talk about body talk, you're also a medical intuitive. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Take her home with me. Got so many talents. I'm taking her home with me. <laughs> and I just pull it all in. I just, you know, I just go with whatever is needed, and it just pops up. And I go, oh, okay, I'll go this way. Oh, I'll go that way. You notice, like when I get on the call with you, I don't have a set agenda. I go, okay, so how are you doing today? And I let you set the pace, and then I just go from there. I thought I was going to get away and start doing something. You know, I'm talking to her. She goes, Are you sitting down, laying down? <laughs> I said, no. Yes, I'm listening, too. I'm like, she sounds like she's walking around, and she's putting stuff away and opening door. I could hear it. Wow. And I, and I caught her, so she had to go sit down. I was lay down in my couch. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Oh, are we done already? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Oh, thank my you. goodness. This is awesome. <laughs> oh. I'm Carolina Castorena. And this is John Hirano. Physicians of Inspiration. God bless all of you. And God bless our troops. Oh, God yay. bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. power, invisible, and you see it everywhere and every day. One power, indescribable, and you speak of it with every word you say. Mysterious until you know the truth As simple as the love inside of you Call it God, call it spirit, call it Jesus